I'm here with um, Allison Dries, and today we're just going to talk about her intentionality of planning with the, um, science and engineering practices and kind of what she's done this year with her earth science kids. Um, so I, I'll maybe just kind of turn it over to you and just start talking. What are your daily sheets and okay. how you kind of came to that idea? So I started with um, storylines back in my old school and that's where the idea of linking everything together came from really because when you do a storyline because you have that initial phenomena then this like what you do on the daily basis are the science and engineering practices so like the activities per day per phenomena would be something like using models or arguing from evidence and then the cross-cutting concepts are basically the connections the kids make between the days during the ongoing storyline. So like, I know energy and matter could be an ongoing theme for multiple days and multiple phenomena. And that cross-cutting concept like ties that together. Um, but you can have multiple SCPs and cross-cutting concepts during that unit of the storyline. So I wanted to make the use of these more visible to the kids because when I go and I plan the storyline, the form that I was using really intentionally like laid out, this is the SCP, this is the cross cutting concept, these are how they fit with the DCIs and here's how it fits from day to day. So I just wanted that to be more visible to the kids because I know that's how we're trying to move. So I made the daily sheets because I wanted that to be more visible but then also it gives them a place to basically journal and I feel like that writing component and reflection component is really important especially for the cross-cutting concepts if they're going to link between the days or multiple lessons within the storyline I want them to be able to journal like around that cross-cutting concept and how it fits in with each day so I basically just set it up with it's got their classic name and date but then it has a guiding question per day there's always a you big like umbrella unit guiding question and they don't put that on their daily sheets but they put the day-to-day -day ones so like for example in this unit our big guiding question is why were there so many devastating hurricanes in 2017 and then our quest sub question under that today was just how do hurricanes even form in the first place so they put that how do hurricanes form on their daily sheet. So that's their guiding question. And where did those guiding questions come from? So they come from two places. The first thing is when I do the initiation of the story and lines, I have the kids look at the initial phenomena. So we watch a little video clip and read an article about the statistics of the hurricanes this year, the destruction, the number, how compared to past years. And they did some like orid questions and discussion around that as little groups then they came up with their own questions so basically just whatever questions popped into their head after seeing the clip or reading the article or talking in their groups and they just wrote those out on the story or on whiteboards and so then I compile and they basically present their best questions and we compile those and those get basically grouped into categories of like oh all of these questions are about hurricanes all of these questions are about climate change all of these questions are about how people are impacting this and so then from those questions I derive or kind of tweak them a little bit and those are the ones that get presented day to day okay. um, and sometimes that doesn't work sometimes the questions they come up with aren't good enough so I have to drive the questions <clears throat> but I at least like try to make it like the kids are coming up with them so I'll say like well, if we're going to understand this, maybe we should ask this. Do you agree? And like, yes, they agree. And so <laughs> it's like they're still driving it. Okay. Um, so that's where the guiding questions from the unit come from, mostly from the kids, but a lot of direction from me as well. Okay. So then how do you place in the SCP and the cross-cutting concept based off of those essential questions? Okay, so then like, for example, today's how do hurricanes form, that's a lot of just modeling because you can't go outside and see a hurricane. So we're looking at animations, computer animations for how the hurricanes form. So it's just basically I go out and I find, okay, these are the best activities or the best ways to get them to the answering that question and that understanding. And that's when I decide, okay, all of those activities I want they're using models or the activity I want is they're arguing from evidence 
So I pick the activities first to meet the DCI. And then I decide, okay, now that this, these activities will get them to the understanding of the DCI, now I notice that we're just looking at models today, basically, and interpreting them. That's also then how I get to the cross-cutting concept. So, for example, if they're going to understand how hurricanes form, and use models for the process of them forming. They're really just looking at the system of a storm, mm -hmm. the system, the components of it, how e the inputs, the outputs of the system, and how um, different, on different scales the system all works in different ways, and then how all of those connect. So I actually start with the DCIs, okay. then go to the SEP, then go to the cross-cutting okay. concept, which is might be backwards from what you're supposed to do. I'm not sure. I don't know that there is a supposed to do. Yeah, I don't know. It works for you. It does. And it works well, actually. And so what you're referencing here are the Bozeman um, <coughs> posters. So we had these printed at the beginning of the year. And then you place these on your board, I correct? do. Yeah, they have black marks on the back because that's where the magnet goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just magnet them up on the board and then whenever for like today I was like we're using computer models so I move this to the section of the board where you know we're creating our diagrams or creating our models or if there are questions about the inputs or outputs of the system I move this over to the question so they know like you are talking about the system components here. Do you feel that this visual is helping your students categorize what it is that they're doing? Well, I actually had somebody yesterday ask me, where are your little posters? Because I had like yeah. run out of time to get them out my seventh and eighth hours. And That's some, awesome. <laughs> somebody goes, where are your little blue and green posters? Because I think, especially patterns, we've been using patterns a lot as a cross-cutting concept. And they got so used to, whenever I said the word patterns, they could start to recognize them themselves. They're like, oh, by looking at all these, we're just really develop, like identifying patterns. Mm -hmm. So they're starting to use the vocabulary, which means I think they're being able to compartmentalize it. And I was observing your classroom one day when they were saying it. They're like, man, we've been doing patterns a lot. Yeah. <laughs> to hear them say that, freshmen say that, that that's really cool. OK, so these are the Bozeman ones. Mm -hmm. um, we have larger <coughs> versions of these, too. And then we have these small ones. And on the back side of them, um, there's additional information. So we have made uh, a set, uh, you a classroom set of 13. Mm -hmm. You haven't used them yet. No. But how do you think you would use them? And maybe focusing specifically with the SEP to start with anyway. Okay. Well, I use the backs during my planning. A lot of my reflection questions or journal prompts come from the backs of okay. these. So, for example, the SEP on the back of the models one says the performance here is they have to identify the components, identify relationships between the components, and use the connections to describe, explain, and predict. So that's actually how I'll grade them for the day or grade them on their unit assessment if the unit, like the standard performance task, is using a model. That These are the three categories I'll grade them okay. in. Um, and so like if, for example, during the day they're creating a model, I make sure to mention like you must identify the components of your model. And I'll demonstrate what that looks like. Or you must identify the relationships. And so I'll ask them questions about, okay, how does this and this connect? Um, so that drives the reflection pieces, but also the product that they're making for that day. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about your product with your daily sheet, do mm -hmm. you collect those daily? Do I you have, grade them? Oh, okay, I have been. It's been very overwhelming. Um, it's gotten me really behind in my grading. I even made it simple. Like they have a, at the bottom for the storyline, they have a what I figured out box. Mm -hmm. And that's where their reflection or their product goes for the day. Um, and I've just been putting a plus or a minus on it. Like either they got it or they didn't. And if I put a minus, I give them feedback, like, um, you didn't answer the question. Go back and reread, please. Or I circle something and say, explain this further, or tell me how, or explain to me why this happened. And so then they can go, the, they, they're, they get used to turning that back in to earn that plus, basically, in that score box. Um, and so I've been doing that on a five-point basis. 
And doing that daily takes a lot of time, especially with the giving of feedback. And so I've been falling so behind on getting those in the grade book. I don't think that's the best way to do okay. it. But that's how I have been doing it. So next semester, you have another shot at the same class. Yes. Do you see that going differently? Yes. I'm With standards reference grading especially, I'm wondering if what I'll want to do is still kind of glance at them daily, but maybe pick five kids out of each class or something and look at that and say, okay, based on what I saw, here were our misconceptions or missteps, here's where we were really strong, kind of discuss and solidify things, and then maybe once a week score one of those mm -hmm. out of, so use one for one daily sheet for each day, but only one of those gets a plus or minus, like the one with the biggest part of the SEP or the CCC or the DCI that really tells me if they get it or not grade that one per week, and then the rest just pull five to kind of monitor as formative assessments. Sure. That's my thought. Okay. Do they get to use those sheets on the test? Yes. And so it depends, well, so I've been doing my tests as project-based, so I take the standard and whatever that performance task is, like for the Big Bang it was they had to create a model of how the universe formed through the process of the Big Bang. So they literally did create models with inputs, outputs, components. They had to show relationships between all of those steps of how the universe formed during the Big Bang. Um, where was I going with this? Do you get to use, do they get to use the sheet? And so they get to use the sheets because the daily sheets are like the individual components of that model, and then they have to synthesize them and put them together for the performance task in the end. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a regurgitation of information that's on the sheet they have to process. Right, and then everything is in their own words. They're never given anything that's on the sheet unless it's direct notes, but it's that what I figured out box that they end up using a lot because it's their own summary of the day and the key points there that they learned, and then that's typically what ends up going on their unit test. Do you think kids have figured that out, that it's important to fill that sheet out daily? Most of them, yes. So I've had some young, like my young ladies who do rather well because they are organized and keep their binders up to date and keep like the daily sheets in order by date since they have dates on them. They will go straight to that what I figured out and they will use that directly and then add to that and make it more in depth on their unit test. My, I have other kiddos though who just really struggle with organization and synthesis, so they have a really hard time taking the individual daily components and figuring out how they fit together. Like I had one kid who handed in his claim evidence reasoning test just the other day with nothing on it, and he just said, I don't know any of this. He'd gotten an A on the multiple choice part, so he knew the content, the DCI, but he could not use it to argue from evidence. And so I don't, that's my biggest struggle is with those performance tests, how do you support the kids who can't think that deeply? And you're practicing along the way. It's not like yeah. you just do that as your assessment. You've practiced it. No, we have. So like for that last unit with claim evidence reasoning, the arguing from evidence, we practiced just doing CER at the beginning, the middle, and the end. They had an ongoing packet where every time we hit the key part of a DCI, they wrote out the claim evidence and reasoning for it. So they had practiced in four different ways with that. So I'm kind of stuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do we go with that? Yeah. I, yeah, I have no idea what the next steps are for that. But it, the performance tasks are either loved or hated by the kids. They either love them because, unlike a multiple choice test, they tell me that they get to actually show what they know instead of having to like look for specific wording in a question, mm -hmm. or they absolutely hate it because it's such an abstract form of thinking. That they're not used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you see that getting better as we do more and more? I do. A lot of the kids end up having more confidence in themselves and I used these performance tasks at my last school quite a bit 
and over the year of biology with them, they were so high quality in the end. I was really impressed with what they were producing, but it took a lot of hard work and support. And since I only have Earth Science kids for a semester, it's not as easy to do as if you have them for a full year. Right. But yeah, I like them better. The kids ended up liking them better with the bio classes I had that were year long. Mm -hmm. um, All right, um, to kind of circle back, I mean, we talked about your daily sheet, the intentionality of um, your SEPs where you do the visual posters with kids. Yeah. Um, you use the backs of these to help guide you. Yes. One thing that we didn't touch on is how do you see students using the backside since we did make a classroom set. So next semester you said you are going to try and work that in. Right. How do you see that happening? I'm thinking, just to keep it simple at the start, because I think you could go really in depth with this, but I'm thinking like, for example, if you look at the back of the CCC here for systems, there are all these different questions that deal with systems. And I think what I want to try is I want to maybe narrow it down to three questions and say pick one and make this your journal prompt for the day. So then they are intentionally picking out inputs and outputs and being able to put that together. And then maybe what I do is one they didn't pick, I can give to them later because it's probably the one they were less comfortable with, something like that. So then at least I get a window into their brain as to which, oh, like inputs and outputs, they feel really comfortable with that because 50% of the class is picking to answer that one question, but none of them are picking how do those connect? Mm -hmm. So that's where I need to focus on more. Um, so kind of as a window for them to feel more comfortable in their journaling, they get to pick what they feel comfortable with, but then that also gives me an insight as to where we need to work on more. And then I'm thinking also if the performance tasks could be vamped up a lot, um, I would like to see them actually taking these themselves, like just giving them like you are, if for example, making a model for this performance task. So they can then use the back of the card and say, okay, so these are the three things that need to go in and use this kind of as a guiding tool for what goes into their model instead of giving specific, really specific questions, really specific, like for example, if I were they were to model the Big Bang instead of saying, show me how a supernova, or that doesn't have anything to do with the Big Bang, but we'll go with it anyway. Show me how a supernova forms and the outcome. They could just be able to pick, okay, one component of creating star stuff is a supernova, and then here's how it's related to the other things, and here's how this becomes us, like their explanation, their connections. Yeah. So it's really more student driven. So you yeah. see the cards helping you in that sense. I that think it's going to be more student driven. Yes. I think, however, with freshmen, that would have to be well modeled and practiced over and over and over again. Sure. Do you see yourself using these right away next semester or practicing first and then using them? Oh no, I, I don't even think practice would come first. I think modeling okay. would come first of how to use the cards and just basically telling them, so I'm thinking through here are my options of questions to journal about. I'm picking this one because yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And so then that's the one they answer, for example, and then halfway through the semester they get to go through that sure. process and then finally okay. letting go. Well good, that's exciting. I'm excited to work with you with that and uh, collect data on that to see how kids are doing. Yeah. It'll be interesting to compare it to this first semester. It will, it will be. I think it's going to be a lot of work though. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're up for it. <laughs>